And most of your stress is because you're thinking about too many things at once. In fact, when people don't do things, it's not because they can't. It's not even because they don't want to. It's because of the way they are focusing on what I call chunking things. When people don't follow through, here's what they do. I'll give you an example. Who here believes exercise is very important, but you don't exercise regularly? Let me see a show of hands. Raise your hand. <laughs> More hands than most of us want to raise our hand, right? Now, who here really focuses, or I should say, exercises regularly? Raise your hand. Regularly. Okay, great. Who here does not exercise regularly, even though you believe it's important? Just be truthful. Okay, great. So let's see what the difference is here. A person here who does not exercise regularly, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to tell me why you don't exercise regularly. Be truthful. Okay? Yes, sir. I don't have the time. Now, is that true? <laughs> he even knows it's not true. He's going to answer you first. No. But it feels like he doesn't have the time because time is emotion. And he's got so many other things he is focused on getting results in that adding this to the list seems like a lot, right? And the other things are very important to him, like his business. I don't have the time. He has the time. What's the real reason he doesn't do it? Because of the way he thinks about exercise. When he focuses on what it would take to exercise, he does it very differently than someone who follows through. When you think about exercising, what's involved? Okay, he starts thinking about, I got to get to mile 14 of the London Marathon, and that, even the thought of trying to get to the 14th mile, much less the 25th mile, is like beyond my imagination right now. So he is what I call overchunked. He's not thinking about what he wants, he's thinking about what's painful. You just saw a perfect example. He's not even thinking about victory or succeeding. So the chance of him following through on something that he associates major pain to, when he can do something else right now he can feel competent or successful at, his chances of following through are very limited. How many will follow that? Say I. His focus is on failure. His focus is on pain. That's why he isn't following through. Okay? He's also focused on the 14th mile of a marathon rather than today's workout. Which one seems more daunting to you? <laughs> so when you think of what it, and here's also what he's thinking about. He's thinking about the process, not the outcome or result he wants. And when you think about what it's going to take to do something, usually it takes a lot and you're not going to want to do it. So he's overchunked himself. He's trying to eat the whale whole without taking any smaller bites. And it seems too big for him, so he says, well, I'll do it when? Later, as my Australian friends would say, later, <laughs> right? And of course, the problem with doing it tomorrow is when you get to tomorrow, tomorrow is today, and tomorrow never comes. So, and you keep promising yourself. By the way, what does this do to you emotionally when you keep breaking your own promises with yourself? Or you keep failing to do things that you know are important? Does it increase your level of certainty and confidence? No. What it does is it erodes it. And when you erode confidence in one area, believe it or not, it affects the other areas too. Do you believe me on that? Yes. Don't believe me. What about your own life experience? Maybe not one area, but it starts to be multiple areas, it sure does. Another reason why somebody doesn't exercise or do anything is because they don't just chunk it too big, they chunk it in too many details. I'll give you a perfect example. So I asked somebody one time, I said, uh, okay, how important is exercise? Is? Oh, exercise is extremely important. Really? Okay, good. And tell me, why don't you exercise regularly? Well, I, you know, I just don't have time. Okay, everybody gives that answer. That sounds wonderful. So tell me though, don't tell me about how much time you don't have. Tell me this. When you think about exercising, what do you think about? Which is a way of saying, what do you focus on? And so this woman says to me, well, my gosh, you know, uh, I, I, mean, I, I mean, what do you mean what do I think about? Well, let's say I said to you, you, you got to start exercising and I'm going to put a gun to the head of your children and I will do very horrible things and hurt them badly if you don't exercise. Could you do it? Oh yeah, I could do it. You know if, I, if, you, if some mafia person came here and said I'm going to kill your children if you don't exercise every day, how many think you could find a way to exercise every day no matter what your time constraints may be? So remember this. Remember this. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation. 
I'll say that again. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation or drive, having strong enough reasons. If you got a strong enough reason, you could figure out the time, couldn't you? So the biggest part of life and time management is knowing what you want and having enough reasons to follow through. But there is one more piece. If you make enough reasons to follow through and you know what you want, but you make the task overwhelming, you'll be overwhelmed. So I said to her, forget what I said. Let's just say you're really going to start exercising. You're going to do it regularly. How would you do it? What, 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 what's involved with exercising? What's involved with exercising? What do you focus? She goes, well, if I was going to work out regularly, I'd, I'd, I'd have to find a, a club to join. I said, okay, well, so then what? She goes, well, what, you want to know the whole process? Said, yes, tell me the whole process of what it would take to exercise. She goes, oh my God, I, 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 I'd, have to, I'd have to get on the web and search for like all the exercise places around my home. And I, you know, then I have to look through those and see which one is probably closest or which one is you know, probably nicest. And I don't really know, so I probably have to search on the web and like read about each of them and get a sense and see the pictures of the place. But of course, you know, it's never the way they really show it to you. They always show you the best pictures. It's not really that nice. So then I have to get in my car and I gotta find these places. So you know, I have to Google the location and look it up. And then I drive there and you know, a lot of times the instructions are wrong on Google. So sure enough, I get the place that's not even the right place. And then I have to call the place on my cell phone. Then after I call the place, I can write down the directions. Of course, I probably don't have a pen. I mean, you know how it is when you're driving. And so finally, I get a pen, I draw down the directions, or try to remember in my mind, and I get to the place, and now I gotta get a ticket. You know how you get that ticket, and then I gotta go find a parking space. And then I find the parking space, and what do I gotta do? Now I gotta go into this place. And when you go in the place, you can't just go look around. They want to escort you, don't they? Some salesperson wants to escort me, so I gotta go with the salesperson. They walk me around, they show me the locker room, and they show me this, and they show me that, and they show me all this stuff. And then let's say I wanna even buy it here. I can't just give my credit card. They want me to fill out a little application. Like I'm two years old again, I'm in high school. Oh, come on, give me a break. And then I fill out the application, and I gotta pay them, and then they wanna sell me a 10 million year membership, and I just wanna try this for six months. And then after all that, then they wanna take a picture that looks worse when you take it than your driver's license. Plus, after that, now what I do? Now I gotta flash the card, go into work out. And what I gotta do work out? I gotta take off all my clothes and I gotta hang them up in this tiny little locker where my stuff doesn't really fit and it's gonna get wrinkled and I know it's gonna fall off and it's gonna get wrinkled and it's gonna be terrible. And so let's say now I do that and so I go to the first station. I gotta figure out which station to go to so now they probably wanna give me some trainer who's gonna tell me what to do. But let's say I do it on my own. I go to the first station, somebody's sitting there, some sweaty, smelly person who gets up and they, they got sweat all over. So now I gotta take my towel and I gotta wipe it all off and then, and then I gotta adjust the weight and then I don't know what the right weight is. I gotta adjust it again and get the hassle, figure out how to adjust it and then I finally do my exercise and then I gotta wipe the thing off and then I gotta go find the second station and maybe there's somebody there, maybe it's all sweaty and I don't know the numbers and then after I do all these ones, station after station after station after station, now I gotta go to the locker room and, and take off my sweaty clothes, which I'm gonna put in a bag, which I know is gonna stink up my car. And then I gotta go in and take a shower, and maybe I'll first do a steam room or something, but then I'm gonna see body parts of other people I don't even wanna see. And then, then I gotta go and I gotta do my hair and then I gotta do my makeup all over again. Gotta start all over my makeup, do the whole thing, all these little pieces. And then I gotta put on my now wrinkled clothes, and now I can't even just leave. I gotta go to the front and I gotta get my ticket stamp so I don't have to pay for it. Then I gotta find my car, which I forgot where it is, and then I gotta show it to the guy and then I drive out. <sighs> That's what it takes to work out. <laughs> well, what does it take to eat? <sighs> just do it. <laughs> what do you mean just do it? Well, I don't know, what, what kind you want? Tell you, okay, I know 12 places, let's go. <laughs> well, what do you mean? See, eating is one chunk. Exercising is 3,229. Where every little step of what I gotta do, I think about all, all the consequences and the elements and the pieces, and that's why they don't do it. They're overchunked. What you focus on, you feel what you feel. You are moved to somehow actuate. Change a question, change your life. When it comes to planning your life, I want to get you to learn to ask three questions now. And the first one is not, what am I going to do? And how many understand why now? Say I. The question you want to ask yourself is, what do I want? What's my outcome? What's my result? The word RPM, the first one is to get you focused on the target. The target is not the activity. The activity can change. It's what the, what's the result I'm after. If you know exactly what it is you really want, what you desire, what you're really after,
clarity is power. The more clear you are on specifically what you want, the faster your brain can get you there. But if you're generally saying things like, what do I want? Well, you know, I want more money. Fine, here's a dollar, get out of here. <laughs> Did you achieve the outcome? Yeah, when you're that general, you, may be, you think you're not getting your goal, you are. The way you language your goal, the way you think about it, you're receiving it. You know, you know, I, you know, I want to feel a bit better. I want to lose some weight. Fine, you lost a pound, you're done. Because your brain's like a servo mechanism and a bomb and a missile. The old days, you shoot a missile and the target was going, and if you missed the trajectory, you missed it. Today, what happens when the missile's not on course? What happens? It locks onto the heat signature, and what does it do? It moves and follows it. That's the way your brain is if it knows the outcome, if it knows the result. So RPM starts with, I got another result. This is a results planning system. The rapid planning method, but you can think of it as a results planning system. I need to know the result I'm after before I ever ask myself what to do. That takes more time, but it's worth it. Now, for time's sake, I'm not going to do this with you right now, but I'll tell you what I do when I've taught this to people and I've got a full weekend to do this in. Just give you a picture. If I asked you right now to write out your name, your full name, now some of you abbreviate your signature, but write out your full name in cursive, Go ahead and do that one time. Write your full name in cursive. I can't even use the word cursive. Is that really the word people still use? It means in handwriting, I guess, but in cursive. Just write it out in full name, because you can do this later on. Now, if I had you get with a partner, and you can try this later if you want. I'm just going to tell you, because I don't want to take the time, because we have such limited time today. And I have your partner say to you with a stopwatch here, okay, ready? And I go, go. And you write it out. And you tell me when you're done. I go, stop. And I write down how long that was. So let's say you wrote out your signature and it took five seconds. And they say, ready? Write it out, ready, go. You tell me you're done, stop. And I write down, five seconds. I have to do that 10 times. You'll find in the beginning, you'll be, let's say, six seconds. I'm making it up. Everybody's signature is different. And you probably might get down to as little as five seconds. If you have like an iPhone, you could do it as a digital stopwatch. You could see the middle seconds. Then I say to you, I want you guys to write every other letter in cursive. In other words, you're going to write half as many letters. How long do you think it would take to do it? Half as much time? Most of you will take twice as much time in the beginning, and then eventually, what's interesting is, if I do it ten times, and the last two or three, and this makes no logical sense, and again, I don't want to take the time to have all of you do this ten times, ten times, ten times, but you can go do it on your own, I'll just tell you the result. In most cases, even though you're doing half as many letters, you cut it by two-thirds of the time. There's something happens when you break an old pattern and you do it fresh. Your brain over the years has learned ways to move more rapidly since when you did your original signature, and you'll do it in a third the amount of time. It'll take twice as much at first, and then it'll cost you a third amount of time. Now, let me tell you why I'm telling you this. The system I'm calling the rapid planning method, by the time I show it to you, you're going to go, this takes more time than just making my to-do list. It will win. When will it take more time? When? initially but once you get it in your nervous system it'll take you less time because your brain will be thinking in outcomes and not activities and when you think in terms of outcomes and not activities pretty soon some of the activities in your list you don't even need to do to get the outcome you find a better way to get the outcome quicker now how do you do that you ask three questions question one what is my result what is my outcome what is it i really truly want from this if you're going back next week and you say this next week, what are the most important what? Outcomes for me to get this week in my business. And you just write those outcomes out. Not your action items, the outcomes. You, if you do that and nothing else, you'll be ahead of the game. And if you just keep looking at those outcomes every day, how am I doing on that outcome? Your brain will come up with ways to get to that outcome. I promise you. Focus on outcomes, not on activities. Action for most people. Activities... Most people may mistake movement for achievement. They mistake action items and to-dos for achievement. We're after the achievement. Are you with me on this, yes or no? Yes. It's a different way of thinking, and I think all of you inherently have it, but if you make this ritualized, just like the things you've learned this week, they're all great, but if you don't systematize them, they'll work when you do them. But if you systematize them, right, and you see, like Mr. Holloman here, where he goes in and just does it and does it and makes sure it's being done again, or what you've seen Chet do, or what I do. You just do it over and over again, you don't miss it. Now the results are geometric. 
So I want to get you to systematize the thinking, whether you do it visually the way I'm going to show you or not. So first question, what's the result I'm after? What's the ultimate result? What do I want out of this week, out of this thing, out of my business, out of my life, out for my body? And you want to be as what is possible when you describe that outcome, that result, as what? As clear and specific as possible. Generalities will confuse you. So it might take you longer than just writing down call so-and-so to think, if I'm calling my, my son, I'm going to call Jarek, or I'm going to call my brother. This is what goes through my head before I call him, always. What's my outcome? Because I don't want to just call him. I want Jarek to feel loved by his dad, or I'm thinking about what's my outcome. I've got to talk to him about this thing that's out there. I've got to make sure I get through to him on this because I want to guide him and move him in this direction. That's why I want to be as his father. I, wanna, I don't want to just chit-chat. I can do that too. So if you think before every phone call, before every time you're planning your day, and you think before you have any meeting, what do you think the first thing I ask of anyone when we sit down in a meeting is? Okay, what are your, what are your outcomes? What, what are the outcomes for this meeting? First thing I want to know, because if I know the outcomes, guess what? A lot of meetings, they're done pretty quick. Because if I know the outcome, you don't have to go through all the activities to sell me on it. Just, that's your outcome? How do you want to do it? Sounds good to me? Rock. That's how you make a meeting productive. I know a meeting's productive not by the hours or time. Sometimes it takes longer to the outcome than you want, but I'm going to get the outcome. That's, by the way, what you see with me on stage. That's why my times vary, but it's based on an outcome. I'm going to get that outcome. I don't give a damn whether it's the right time or not. I want to do it at that time, but I must deliver the outcome. How many get that? And by the way, how many like to have your company focused on outcomes, results, and not activities? Say I. People say all the time, well, did you get that done? Well, you know, I left them an email. I, I, I left them a voicemail. I sent them three emails. How many times have you heard that? When that happens with me, I'm like, ah, you know, but I don't show it. I just like, really? <laughs> wow, that's fascinating. We'll explain our, about our culture. It's about getting the result. So I can help you if you can't figure another way to do it, but there are maybe 12 other things we might want to do. Maybe they don't have the answer. Maybe somebody else can give us the answer. The outcome was to get this information, not to leave an email or 12 or three voicemails. That will not do any of us any good. How many follow? Now, whether you get the outcome or not, whether you get that result, will be based first via clarity.